Hey everybody, my name's Aaron. Welcome back to the channel. Do you ever long for the look and feel of those old vintage keyboards we used back in the early 80s? Well, today I'm going to show you how you can go from a modern mechanical keyboard to a more vintage model that brings back a lot of nostalgia. It's coming up right now on the Retro Hack Shack. Well, hey everybody, welcome to the Retro Hack Shack and welcome to the 80s set. This is the first time I've actually shown the 80s set and uh, it's been a long time coming. Definitely fits in with the vibe of the channel. So I plan to use this anytime I talk about anything from the 80s, uh, maybe to even early 90s. I'll pull out this set. I actually ended up hiring my daughter who is a uh, studying to be a graphic designer in college. She came up with the idea for the lines and the the colors to match the neon sign and everything, and I think it looks fantastic. If you like the 80 set, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, with that out of the way, uh, let's talk about the topic at hand, which is vintage computer keyboards. Now, I've shown on this channel how you can take an uh, original computer keyboard. I did this, I believe, for the one that came with the uh, Macintosh Plus. I took that keyboard and adapted it to work on a modern system with USB, and uh, it was great. I mean, it was really fun to use that keyboard with a modern uh, you know, Windows 10 computer and everything, uh, but it wasn't really necessarily practical. The height of the keyboard, the ergonomics was really pretty far off, and uh, I think if I had to use that for my daily driver, since I do a lot of typing, probably would have ended up with carpal tunnel syndrome. So mechanical keyboards have certainly made a comeback over the past few years. I'm even seeing some of the younger generation, like my son and other folks his age, really get into the look and feel of their keyboard. And so people are designing their own custom uh, mechanical keyboards, and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and get a modern mechanical keyboard that has the right ergonomics on it, but redesign it with key switches and keycaps that mat that match, uh, you know, the early 80s and some of the keyboards that I was particularly fond of that I have in my collection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go take you through my process, show you what I was able to build and give a little bit of mechanical keyboard 101 in terms of the types of switches and keycaps and things like that uh, for those who may just be getting started. At the end of the day, I hope to have a keyboard that looks and feels similar to those early keyboards, but still maintains uh, the possibility for new and different configurations. So very flexible and also one that's more ergonomic to use. So let's get started. Okay, so this is the keyboard that I'm coming from. This I've been running this mechanical keyboard for two or three years. It is a Gigabyte, sorry, Gigabyte, a Logitech uh, G513 Carbon Linear. Well, linear refers to the switch type, and I'll explain that more in a minute. I got it because I like the feel of the keys, and it does have LED uh, backlit keys that light up. Here's Ripple. And as, as I press a key, it ripples across the, the keyboard from wherever I'm pressing to the outside edges. Here's that echo press again. See, as I light, as I press different keys, they light up um, and kind of then kind of fade away. Pretty cool. So beyond those pixels that were going wonky, the other problem was the keys uh, were breaking really easily, the keycaps. I actually eventually had to um, uh, glue, super glue this one down, the control key. I use that a lot for games. So the way they design these keys is actually, they have these like four little posts in here and these little posts, they break really super easily. And there's a view of what the actual key switch looks like. It's got the, it's pretty got a pretty cool diffused LED coming out of there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's where the posts go in. Really hard to line up and get in there. Really easy to take off and really easy to break. Now, Logitech has recently switched from using these switches called Romer G to their GX switches, which are really just rebranded uh, Kale MX switches. So Logitech keyboards should be more compatible in the future. Okay, so the question is, what kind of keyboard do I want to build? What do I want this keyboard to have? Well, number one, I want it to be a newer style keyboard, but with a retro look and feel. So the retro look and feel definitely rules out a black keyboard with lots of blinky lights. 
The, what I'm looking for is something that looks a little bit more retro, maybe a white or beige keyboard. Um, and I want to be able to find some switches that feel like older older switches and I want to have keycaps that look like older uh, keys uh, from an older style keyboard. But I also wanted to have some of the modern conveniences. So standard key switches like MX style key switches where there's a lot of choices in the type of key switch, the feel of the key switch and the compatible keycaps that can go on those key switches. I also want those key switches to be hot swappable because I don't know really if I'm going to like the switch that I pick. There's a lot of switches out there and I want to be able to swap back and forth or maybe even mix uh, the switches on various places of the keyboard. Maybe I need a, a stronger switch, for example, on the space bar or for gaming, maybe I want the WASD keys to have a little bit different feel. So maybe at this point you're thinking, hey, why don't I just create my own PCB and make a really custom keyboard? Well, for that, you can turn to today's sponsor, which is PCBWay. PCBWay offers inexpensive PCB manufacturing and a whole lot more. Need assembly services? No problem. They can do front side, back side, through hole components, you name it. They also offer 3D printing, CNC milling, and more. So check out PCB Way for your next project, and I thank them for their support of the Retro Hack Shack. Okay, so let's start with the base, with the keyboard itself, and this is what I went with. It's a Keychron C2 full-size mechanical keyboard. Recently, there's been a trend to minimize keyboards and they're referred to based on their layout and the percentages of a full-size keyboard. So just taking a look at these different percentages, the 60% keyboard is what a lot of people are using. And it's just the, the number row, the letters, and the basic keys that you need there. Um, and then if you go one level further and add those function keys and the escape key at the top, then you're into a 75% keyboard, as you can see. And there's various mixtures, you know, uh, between those. There's even a 40% keyboard, which is really, really tiny. Um, and of course, there's a special version called the 1800 Compact, uh, which tries to squeeze in like the number, the number pad and the arrows and stuff, but they do it in a way that's like really, really compact. Um, and then there's the tenless keyboard, which is like everything except for the number pad. And then of course what we have is the full-sized keyboard. And the choice of the full-size keyboard is obvious because again, I want this to look retro. So this keyboard is um, hot swappable keys, which means I can pull um, not just the keycaps off, but I can pull the key switches themselves out and then pop in a new key switch. Um, and I can vary those as I see fit all across the board, which is really, really nice. But beyond being just hot swappable, this also supports Mac and uh, PC. There's a little switch here, so you can switch back and forth between Mac and PC, and it has a USB-C cable. Again, some of those modern options that are really nice, it goes from USB-C to either USB-C or to USB-A, and it has, uh, you know, some, uh, some options here to tilt the keyboard up, two different options that you can use depending on what you like on your particular keyboard. So I felt like this was a pretty good option and it was relatively inexpensive. It was only about $50 on Amazon. I don't know what that price is today, but when I bought it, it was around $50. You can buy this keyboard in three different varieties based on the key switches that you want to start with, either brown, blue, or red. So you can uh, buy it with those that come stock, but then of course you can change those out. So first thing to know is that there are different key switch standards that are available now. The most common is the MX style of key switch. So you may have heard of MX Cherry Reds or something like that describing the type of key switch. And MX is one style of key switch. There are others, there are Alps and other ones that you can get, but the most popular typically is the MX style. And so I wanted to stick with that. So this keyboard supports MX style key switches. So now it's time to talk about what kind of feel do I want in my key switch? And what I did was I went back to some retro keyboards, some vintage keyboards to see what I personally like to type on best. Here we have an original uh, IBM Model M keyboard. Um, I just picked this up. It'll be featured in an upcoming, uh, or perhaps a previous, depending on when I release it, um, 
e-waste Wednesday video where I talk about things that I find at e-waste and I found this at e-waste. So that's why it's still so dirty. But, uh, you know, this is very iconic and these sell now for a lot of money. Super heavy. Um, you can see that it is, I believe this is the original, uh, version here. This uh, model M from IBM 1984. It's got this, this uh, square style plug on it, which was changed later to a plug that just came out the back of the keyboard. So yeah, very iconic. Uh, one of the original great keyboards, I would say. And uh, it's got a, a key switch in it, which is called buckling spring. And it has a certain ping to it. It's very clicky, has a certain ping. The keys are moderately heavy to press down. I would say they're pretty heavy right now because probably this all needs to be serviced. Um, but if you've ever, you know, if you were in an office back in the day where people had IBM computers, um, they, they may have had a Model F or a Model M and they're very clicky and very loud. So just take a listen to what these uh, key switches sound like. almost like a typewriter type of sound for this particular keyboard. So this is going a little too far. Also, they don't really make uh, MX style keys. It's very difficult to emulate the buckling spring. It's too loud for me anyway. I would annoy everybody. So I don't wanna go with this to this degree to try to emulate a, a Model M, um, IBM Model M keyboard. However, I do like the clicky sound, and this is one keyboard that I instantly fell in love with as soon as I bought my first Apple IIc years ago. And it just really has a wonderful, wonderful feel. Very clicky, um, very tactile. The bump is definitely there, and the click is... Um, kind of a high-pitched click, but not too high-pitched. So you know that you're hitting a key and uh, you can you can both feel it and hear it, and it's very smooth, yet still very clicky. I just love this keyboard. It just feels so good and responsive to type on. Here's what this particular keyboard sounds like. There are multiple uh, uh, versions of the Apple IIc. Not all of them come with these switches, which are Alps, white. Um, there's something else. I'll put it on the screen exactly the name of it, but it's an Alps white key switch and uh, they don't all come with this. Some of them have different key switches. So if you get one of these, hoping to get one of these really great keyboards, you might want to verify before you buy it or at least, you know, feel it out. Make sure it's one that has the key switches that you want because there's multiple varieties. And I'm lucky enough to have multiple keyboards that I could play around with. So I kind of know what type, what style of key switch I'm going for. This is another one that has Alps switches in it. I think these are actual white Alps um, switches, same as almost the same or the same as the uh, Apple IIc I had. And yeah, it's just for me, it's a pleasure to type on. This is all down to personal preference. But for me, this keyboard is really, really fun to type on. It doesn't feel mushy at all. You know exactly when you've hit the key because, you know, you can hear it and you can feel the bump there. And uh, I just really, really like this sound. Here's what this particular keyboard sounds like. I'll probably be featuring this keyboard on some sort of upcoming episode with a clone PC or something, because this piece, this particular keyboard, although it feels great, it's not working, and it does need a little bit of work, and as you can see, there's lots of tape and stuff on it, so that definitely needs a good cleaning montage. So now I know what kind of feel of the key switches that I'm going for. The next question is, well, how do I emulate that in MX keys? And for that, I bought one of these, which is a sampler, um, of different key switches, and uh, it covers a lot of them, as you can see. And I got this because I just, I wanted to be able to emulate the key switch by feel. So feeling those keyboards and then coming back over to a sampler like this uh, really helps. Now these are pretty expensive. This is almost a hundred dollars on Amazon, but I got it because my kids were also interested. They're into mechanical keyboards. They were also interested in checking this out. And I'll probably sell it down the line um, now that I know a bit more about key switches. But one of the things I found is it's really hard to, especially when you're comparing or trying to figure out what style of key switch you want, it's really hard to figure that out because 
you just don't have access to all of them. There are hundreds of different types of key switches out there. And you can go to the store and try out some of the keyboards that they have. In fact, recently I went to Micro Center um, while I was on vacation. There was a Micro Center in the area and I went there and they have a whole aisle now dedicated to mechanical keyboards. So that's one place that you could go to check out what type of key switch you might be interested in. So typically you're going to find three different styles of keys available generally if you buy an off-the-shelf keyboard. You're either gonna find a, a one with red type switches in it, brown type switches in it, or blue type switches in it. And these relate to linear, tactile, and clicky. Those are the three types. Linear, which is non-clicky and non-tactile, there's no bump. You're gonna see tactile, which are the browns. Those have a, a, a bump that you can feel when you press down. And um, they don't generally make a lot of noise except when they bottom out. But on the way down, they don't make um, a, a noise, but you can feel a little bit of bump there. So it gives you some feedback for when, usually when you're um, uh, actually actuating the key switch. And then lastly are the blues. And as I mentioned, these are clicky. So when you press these, they have a really nice click to them, even if you're not bottoming out the key. So there's, you, you can feel that, you can hear that noise, hopefully, um, that you heard on the other keyboards I mentioned. And those are the blues. Now there's other varieties, as you can tell, there's varieties in the amount of weight or the amount of force that you need to apply to the key to get it to travel. And in this sampler, they have some that range from 60 grams, which is very light, all the way up to 100 grams, which actually does take some, some force. Um, if you're heavy handed, this might be a good one, uh, but that takes quite a bit of force to press down that key. Um, whereas this one, you know, goes really, really quick and easily because it doesn't take as much force. The other ones that I would point out, um, in pretty much all the varieties except for the blues are these silent keys. So perhaps you are one, a person that doesn't like any noise, uh, on your keyboard because it annoys you or you live with someone who is going to get really annoyed at any amount of noise, even from the bottoming out noise, um, even if it's not clicky like this one. So for those, you have these silent switches. They're called silent and they have built-in dampeners. Um, typically you can either get them with built-in dampeners or you can buy your own dampeners, um, these O-rings um, like I have here that you can install after the fact if you want to dampen your keyboard sound a bit. But these silent ones hardly have any sound at all when you press them. Here's what these, here's what they sound like. So that's a high level overview of the type of key switches that are available. Um, you can go into more detail online. Like I said, there's hundreds of these different types of key switches available. And so what I was able to do was I was able to compare all of these clicky keys with the Alps white key switches. And the one that was close to me, the one that I liked the most was this one, the Kale Box White, this one right here. Um, it emulates the both the feel and the a noise type and the tactile bump of the other one is very, very similar. So using this methodology, I was able to narrow down to this is the closest one that I could get to those retro uh, vintage Alps uh, white switches. Um, so I really like that one. One more thing in terms of the sound, these different blue and clicky keys here, they do have slightly different sounds. Some of them are higher pitched. Some of them are more muted. And, um, you know, after having this around uh, my wife, who is noise sensitive for a while, she definitely prefers this particular sound of this key uh, clickiness versus some of these other ones. This one here underneath here, this is a cherry RGB blue. And also, I think the the Gatoron blues, they have a really um, high pitched ringing sound to the click. And if you were really going to town on this style switch, it would be annoying. But even though these are both clicky, she says that this one really does not uh, bother her. And she's used the keyboard um, with these switches in it. And she says that uh, it doesn't bother her at all. So even among the clicky keys, try them out, try different ones and see which ones uh, you like the actual sound of.
So why is it called a box white? Well, it's pretty simple. There is a box around the key switch. Okay, so this is your, your average MX switch here. Um, this is the one that came with the keyboard that I ordered and it's a, it's a brown switch and it's, um, you know, kind of shaped like a cross and that's what your, uh, uh, keycap will go on top of, right? So it's kind of shaped like a cross and it's, you know, you could put a round dampener around this particular switch. On the other hand, the box type switches actually have a box surrounding that little cross uh, area where you put the key switch on. And this helps with a couple of different things. It helps keep uh, liquid and crumbs out of the key switch itself. It's not impossible, but it does make it quite a bit harder for liquid to actually get in the switch. So it, for some use cases, it's probably quite a bit better than the regular style switches. But in this case, I didn't really care about that at all. The only thing I was cared about was the look and feel of it. And for whatever reason, this box switch, you know, just seemed to have some really good stability. Um, like if you're pressing it from the side and, um, yeah, it was most about the, mostly about the sound and the feel of the switch. So it just so happened that I chose a box switch, but I didn't necessarily choose it for those other reasons. Okay. Now let's turn to the keycaps themselves. Now on this particular keyboard that I got, um, these keycaps are fine. But the first thing that I wanted to look at was the design of the keycaps themselves. In other words, the way that the letters, numbers were drawn, the fonts that were used, the symbols that were used, etc. And I don't really like this default uh, keycap set that came with this particular keyboard. I don't like this kind of lower or non-capitalized uh, lettering over here, for example. They have some weird symbols up here that I know you can use these as media keys, but, you know, this is supposed to be print screen, but it's like a crop symbol. I don't know. Um, if you compare that to the uh, the Alps keyboard I mentioned before, you can see that these numbers are quite a bit bigger, number one, so they're easier to see. And I prefer the capitalized look here. Um, over here, instead of it saying tab being spelled out, it actually has the symbol, which I prefer. It's much more retro looking. And so I definitely wanted to change up these keycaps. Honestly, I actually like the look and feel of something more like a Commodore or a uh, terminal style um, keyboard with larger letters on the keys and having them centered. So I'm going to be looking for a graphical style that matches something like that. But the edges are a bit sharp, I would say, on these keys compared to what I like. Um, and so when you're moving your, your hand across the keyboard, it's definitely easy to figure out when you're going from one key to another, but it kind of has these sharp edges. And I feel like my fingers are getting caught on these keys when I go diagonally like this or, or whatever. So now let's talk about the profile of the key. And it's good to look at these from the side so you can see the difference. So this is an image I pulled off of Reddit and it shows the various types of keycap profiles and they vary both in height in the way that they curve around the keyboard and in the way you can't really see it here, but in the, the, uh, uh, the well of the keycap itself and how deep that is uh, where your finger rests within the keycap. And as far as the printing on the keycaps themselves, there are two popular methods for printing on these keycaps, especially the lighter colored keycaps like I'm going to be using. The first one is called dye sublimation, and it's basically dyeing the keys uh, to get the lettering on the keycap and the dye actually sinks in and penetrates the actual keycap and leaves a permanent uh, stain, <laughs> if you will, that is the actual letter. Um, and it doesn't wear away no matter how much you use it because it stains all the way through the plastic. The other method is called double shot injection molding. And you'll see this a lot in vintage computers. And it was basically where they would take one color plastic and they would do an injection molding based on that. And then they would fill in the gaps with another color so that you really had two different colors pl of plastic in the same keycap. Now the keycaps that came with this keyboard are actually double shot injection molded ABS plastic. Well, the new keys that I'm going to be showing you in just a minute are using the dye sublimation method. So you'll be able to see the difference in those two style of printing on the keycaps. So here's what I ended up getting in order to retrofy this uh, modern 
mechanical keyboard. So here's the box white switches that I got from a company called Glorious. Pretty popular company to buy these switches from. I got a box of 120 because I need at least 104. And so this was kind of the next level up. Um, and you can also find these. I noticed they have these in stock. I don't know about this particular key switch, but they have glorious key switches in stock in Micro Center. I don't mean to make this a commercial for Micro Center, but I just happened to notice that while I was there. So really popular, good quality, fast shipping. And these were about $30 for 120 key switches. In terms of the keycaps themselves, I went with a set here. This is the MT3 keycap set. Um, I got this at a company called Drop. They're pretty, uh, again, a pretty popular company. They have all kinds of different styles of keycaps that you can buy there. Cost about $100. Um, and the reason I got it was because it matched the type of style of key that I was looking for. Um, and it was also designed by a guy that goes by the name of Matt30. And Matt 30 actually does, uh, these are custom, uh, built. Um, they're sh like a short run type of, uh, keycap. So they only do these in batches because it's kind of expensive to design the molds and stuff to make these. Um, he's specially designed these particular keys to match terminals from the 70, the IBM beam spring terminals from the 1970s. They are high profile or SA type. Keys, and so I'm really anxious to see if I'm if I'm actually going to like <laughs> what I think I'm going to like, uh, which is a terminal style key to use on a daily basis. But Matt Three Zero also designed some Commodore keys that have been floating around a while ago. Um, he did a run of uh, Commodore keys that you could use with these MX uh, Switch style keyboards, and they had the graphics printed on the front um, for the various uh, character graphics and things like that that you could use. So he redesigned those Commodore keys uh, from scratch. And for a while, you could buy those. And who knows, maybe he'll do another run at some point if you're into that style of, uh, of, of uh, keycap. Now, I know what some of you are thinking at this point. Why not just pull some old keys off of an old Commodore 64 or an old terminal and stick them on the newer keyboard? Uh, unfortunately, there are some slight differences in the stems and the way that the keycaps fit. So more likely than not, it's not going to be as easy as that. So you do need to have these specially designed keys in order to get that to work. However, if you know of some keycaps that will fit on modern MX switches, let me know in the comments below. So these keys came in a nice tray like this, which is really nice. Look at that. Some nice little uh, padding in here so that they don't get out of order or anything like that. Um, and here's the basic, here's what the basic keys look like compared to the, uh, the ones that came with it. You can see that the lettering is much bigger and much darker. Um, I just really like this, the font that was used in this and the, um, the fact that it's all centered on, on all the keys just really feels much more retro when compared to these keys that came with the keyboard. The SA keycaps have kind of a rounded top to them like this, whereas these are very square and sharp, as I mentioned before. So after all that planning, the time has finally come to actually switch out the keycaps and key switches, transforming this uh, modern uh, keyboard into a retro vintage looking keyboard. Um, so for that, uh, you know, when I bought the key switches, not only uh, are these quality key switches, but they also came with a keycap puller and they came with a key switch puller. And I'll talk more about the key switch puller in a minute. But if you've watched any of my videos, you've probably seen me use something like this. Uh, it usually comes with two prongs. Looks like you could maybe whisk up an egg with it or something. And basically what you want to do is um, slide the uh, the metal over the keycap itself and then just pull straight up and the keycap should come off just like that. Now I'm just going to demonstrate with a few keys here, but um, I would recommend taking all the keycaps off if you're going through this process, take them all off because it's going to be easier to change the key switches out if you do that. You won't have these other uh, keycaps in the way. Um, and then what I like to do, of course, is, well, not of course, but I like to lay these out um, so that I don't forget where they go. So it goes uh, U, U, I, O, P is how I took those off. I like to lay them out 
um, as I'm taking them off in, so that way when I go to put them back, I can, don't have to really reference another keyboard or anything. Should know where these go, I guess, after 40 years of using keyboards or whatever. But, um, yeah, it just makes it easier to put them back on later when you're done. And it goes without saying that Penny is in the other room. If you have dogs that like to chew on things, uh, these have a tendency to pop out and fall on the floor. And, uh, you could very quickly lose a key to a dog that, uh, thinks it might be a potential treat that they might want to chew on or swallow. Okay, so with our old keycaps off, um, it's time to take out the key switch, and that's where this little handy-dandy tool comes into play. So if you look at the switches, the key switches themselves, on the top and on the bottom of the key switch, they have a little tab right there in the middle, and that should be the same. There should be another one on this side in the middle. Those little tabs are, are along with friction fit, are what keep the... Uh, uh, key switch held into the keyboard, and that's why you need this little tool. And it's easier for me to demonstrate it here um, uh, rather than doing it on the keyboard itself. So your key, your key switch is in the keyboard like this. Those little tabs are on the top and bottom. And what you want to do is you want to take the key switch puller and go as far close to the uh, uh, the PCB or the metal on the keyboard itself as you can, and then squeeze in with this tool like that on the top and bottom. That'll depress those little tabs and then you can yank the uh, the key switch out with this tool. And once you've depressed them, you can actually usually hear them click um, a little bit and then you can, with a little force, you can usually pull this straight out again, just like you do with the keycaps, pull it straight up and it should come out. There we go, last one. Now, before you go and insert your new switches, this is the new Kala kale, whatever, uh, box white switch. Before you do that, you'll want to take a look at these little um, metal pins here because these can get damaged in shipping. They're pretty fragile, actually. I could bend that easily just with my finger. And you want to make sure that those are straight. You can straighten these up with some needle nose pliers or something or even your finger um, just to get those exactly straight before they go into the socket on the board. And as you can see, um, they are off center here on the back. So they only go in one way. So pay attention to look at the holes um, in the sockets on the keyboard there and uh, take a look at the back where the pins are and make sure you have those lined up. These particular switches, I don't know if they all do, um, has this little uh, thing at the top here. It's easier to see the little, little kind of I don't know what that is, hole or whatever at the top, which signifies for me anyway, that that is the top of the key. So it's pretty easy as you're putting this in. For me, I just wanted to make sure that that little, that little rectangle hole there was at the top of the key. And then I knew that the pins would be lined up in the way that they needed to go. As far as putting this in, it's just a simple process. You just line it up, um, kind of set it in there gently and make sure it's lined up in the square or rectangle, push it down. And it's as simple as that. Not very hard at all. Just make sure, again, every time you put one of these in, make sure the pins are straight. Make sure it's in the right orientation. Get it in the middle, and you can just push it in. And let's just take a listen to those new keys. Ah, uh, yes, they feel and sound like butter to me. I know that everyone has their different preference. Some people don't like clicky, whatever. But these feel and sound really close to those vintage keyboards I showed before. Here's what these keys actually sound like. So for me, these are exactly, or not exactly, but very, very, very close to those old vintage keys, those Alps white keys that I'm trying to emulate here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take these off and we will uh, put on the keycaps next. For some of these larger keys that can be difficult to take off, as you can see, this obviously isn't going to fit this way. I guess you could barely fit it that way, but it's going to be pretty difficult, and it's even difficult to go diagonally like that, like you have to do sometimes. Um, there are other types of keycap pullers, so my key switch kit, or maybe the keycap set, I don't remember, came with this keycap puller here. And this one, you can just push down over a long key like this. Come on. There we go. And it clips onto the bottom like that. And again, you can just pull straight up and it'll come right off. 
So as I'm putting these new keycaps on, I wanted to give you kind of a close-up comparison here. This is the new F1 key that I'm putting on. This is the old F1 key. Um, and you can see the profile difference, hopefully, if I hold them side by side. This is much taller and extends out this way quite a bit. And this is much flatter. Um, not only that, but these are really quality keycaps. The letters are sharp and um, uh, a little bit darker on this keycap. And then on the bottom here, you can see the difference in the quality, hopefully, of the thickness of the plastic. So this keycap, I'm pressing it now, <laughs> you can't even probably see, but I'm pressing on this keycap and it barely bends. And if I press on this one, it's also very sturdy, but the key itself is um, much thinner on the edges than this one. It's probably, I don't know, an extra half a millimeter or so thinner on this one versus this one. And, uh, you know, that could make a difference in longevity for sure. Well, I'm about halfway through putting these new keycaps on, and I just wanted to stop and give you a comparison to the new keycaps and what they look like and the old keycaps, which I've left here on purpose just to show you the difference. You can see, well, maybe you can't see, but these are quite a bit higher. Um, I would say two or three millimeters higher, not quite a quarter of an inch, something like that. They're quite a bit higher, and the profile is more curved like this, whereas the profile of the old keys is pretty much flat all the way up to the top. And I didn't think I had to mention this, but in terms, if you're wondering, in case you're timid, uh, in terms of putting these keys on, sometimes you do have to apply a lot of force. I have to apply a lot more force with these custom keys than I did with the stock keys that came with the keyboard. So again, it's just a matter of lining this up over the cross um, there and pushing down, you'll feel it kind of go down, and I like to push it pretty hard a number of times. You don't have to worry about hurting the key switches, especially if you have quality key switches from Glorious like I do. You can just kind of press that down pretty hard um, and make sure that it goes down all the way so you don't have one key that's randomly sticking up in an odd way. Okay, well, here it is with all the keys in place, and I've got to say, I think it looks really, really good. Now I stayed with, I had multiple versions or colors of the escape key and return key. And this return key here, for example, I decided to put red on those because it reminds me a little bit more of some of the colorful terminal keys that you used to see back in the seventies. Um, and the other thing I noticed just playing with this a little bit is the, how deep the, uh, the finger pad of each of these key keys is. In fact, the closest key profile that I can find out of the computers that I have at hand is this Tandy TRS-80 Model 3. It almost has the same exact profile. Matt 30 calls it a high profile, slightly different than an SA, but uh, yeah, very, very similar to a Tandy TRS-80 Model 3. So if you have one of those, you can feel what these uh, keycaps feel like. But let's just try it out. It does have the look I was after. It has the sound I was after. Um, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. I mean, it does make me feel like I'm sitting in, as I'm typing this, it makes me feel like I'm sitting in an old school press room at a newspaper or something for some reason, just with these old keys like this. I don't know. I, I, I think I like it. I definitely like the look of it. I'm going to play with this um, for the next few weeks. I find it takes a couple of weeks to get used to a new keyboard uh, before your fingers kind of have that muscle memory to know where to go. Um, it's definitely going to cause me to uh, lift my fingers off the keys a little bit more, I think, because of how deep these little finger wells are. But overall, I am really pleased with how this has come out. It looks much more vintage. It feels much more vintage and exactly like I like. So I'm really pleased with how this has come out. What do you think? Is this something you think you would like to do? Based on the fact that this is a modern keyboard, the possibilities are endless. You can go with different profile keys. You can go with different lettering, different colors. The world is truly your oyster here in terms of designing your own vintage feel on a modern mechanical 
keyboard with modern switches. So I hope you like that. I hope you learned something about mechanical keyboards, if this is something that's new to you, and just to see what the possibilities are for going retro and impressing all of your friends who are also into vintage and retro systems. I'm sure if you brought this to them, they would really appreciate it. So that's going to do it for today, folks. Thanks for supporting the channel. Be sure to like this video. That tells YouTube that you're interested in the content and helps spread it around to other people who also might be interested. And of course, if you're not subscribed, you can do that and take a look at my Patreon page if you want to sign up for some extra benefits. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Patrons receive ad-free and early access to content after the episode commentary and, of course, your name in the credits. If you liked that episode, here's a few more you might enjoy, and I thank you for your support. End of line.